Welcome back Wolfpack, Verlus here, and today's video is going to be a long one because I'm going through the entire Kanto Pokedex and I'm going to be giving nature recommendations for every Pokemon in Let's Go Pikachu and Eevee. Now the reason why I'm doing this is because I can't upload all the guides as fast as I want to because the YouTube algorithm sucks right now, YouTube is just broken. By the way, leave a like on the video, need all the support I can get because I'm also under dislike botting attacks and YouTube doesn't seem to care. So yeah, things are pretty rough right now, I can't make the content I want to make or my channel dies and I was thinking like yeah, if I did 4 or 5 moveset guides everyone would be happy but we're just not in that state right now. I'm kind of doing this for myself as well, so it's for you guys, that way if you want to understand a Pokemon, you need help because no one's talking about Let's Go and you can't find a guide for it, hopefully this video helps you out. But also, I want to have a level 100 competitive Pokemon for every Pokemon in Let's Go. That the idea is, if I catch one of every Pokemon with the correct nature, and then I just go on like a massive, you know, 4 day Chansey spree, I can have a level 100 of the, like, of all the fully evolved Pokemon in Kanto, and I think that's pretty cool, and it seems very achievable inside of Pokemon Let's Go. So I'm doing this for myself to understand, and also I'm curious as to what Pokemon might be busted, but I've already wasted over a minute kind of setting up the video, and even if I take 30 seconds per Pokemon, we're going to be here for another 40 minutes or so. So Venusaur. Venusaur is going to be modest nature for the most part, but I also feel that there's a case to be made for some defensive natures as well. And that's because if we have a defensive nature, so something like the bold nature, we're going to be taking less damage, and the amount of damage that we're dealing doesn't really offset that. So Earthquake goes from 40% to 45 or 44% so that means we're taking 4% less damage or you know 4% of our health less damage however if we have a modest nature that's only giving us 50% healing on our 10% extra damage so that means we're going to be healing for 2% more damage but we're taking 4% more damage that's why I feel that maybe if you go for a defensive nature uh, using the bold nature to absorb some more earthquakes also because with special flamethrower ice beam those are going to be more common I don't think the careful nature is going to help you out in that case too much so that's going to be the quick case for Venusaur. Uh, next up we have Charizard. Charizard's a weird Pokemon. You can effectively run any nature as long as it makes sense. Uh, Jolly Nature for the Charizard X, Timid Nature for Charizard Y, uh, Hasty Naive if you want to go both, because that's the crazy thing about Pokemon Let's Go! Pokemon Let's Go, you can have Charizard X and Y at the same time. Schrodinger's Pokemon, but maybe just completely docile nature. That way, if you go into Charizard X, you make use of the defensive benefit, go into Charizard Y, make use of special defensive benefit, 100 base speed isn't the best thing out there, so maybe sacrificing that, again, Charizard, a lot of options. Blastoise. Modest Nature, regular Blastoise, works pretty well if you get a lot of damage. It can fake out Aqua Jet, but Blastoise has low attack and those are low base power moves, so I don't think like an adamant nature Blastoise is too viable or anything, even if you're like Mega and try to get the most damage out of it. Uh, fake out Aqua Jet Earthquake has some potential, but on special you have Dark Pulse, you have Ice Beam, you have Hydro Pump. You have a lot of really good options on the special Blastoise, and as for the defensive argument, I was trying to think about something you can do with like a special defense nature on Blastoise. I just think that when you're dealing with super effective hits and a higher moveset diversity, then it's worth having the offensive nature, as opposed to, you know, Venusaur just being a niche sustain case where you actually want to be bulkier for the most part. Uh, Butterfree, Timid Nature is going to work really well. That way you can Quiver Dance, get a lot of speed, outspeed a lot of Pokemon, have reliable setup. So yeah, we're just going to kind of be all over the place because Pokemon Let's Go is wild. And that's mostly just kind of a result from having um, no EVs, no items, no, no things like that. So the damage snowballing isn't as high, which means I'm putting a little bit of extra priority onto defensive value. But at the same time, you still need to do damage. And if you're boosting with something like a Quiver Dance, then that means you don't have to worry about the defenses as much. And some Pokemon, they just aren't physical. So it's kind of like I had to look at each individual Pokemon. I had to rethink about it just for Let's Go. And it took me a couple hours to set up this video. And it's going to take me a long time talking about it. Beedrill. I've seen adamant non-Mega Beedrill do a little bit of work, like it somehow is successful and that's just how weird Pokemon Let's Go is, but if you're running Mega, go for the Jolly Nature. Pidgeot. Timid Nature Pidgeot. I just think it works. Like Pidgeot is a lot better than I thought it was. Like I was, I was thinking Pidgeot was going to be like the worst Mega in Let's Go. However, the 121 speed over the Alakazam, over the Dugtrio, over the uh, Gengar, over all the other Pokemon, chance to flinch, three shots a lot of things, Heat Wave for coverage, and then the Roost. You outspeed with Roost, and then like a slower Thunderbolt, a slower super effective hit, actually becomes neutralized by that Roost, and then you're just kind of sustaining really well on the Pidgeot because there's such a lack of damage, and then Pidgeot has like a lot of combos and mind games around it, so Pidgeot's actually been kind of difficult to deal with in a lot of situations, especially for like you Sucker Punch, they Roost, you could have gone for KO, weird things happen, and also the Elemental Punches aren't getting a lot of use, so you don't have to worry about an Ice Punch for the most part, Pidgeot hold it, holds it down pretty well. Alone Pokemon are kind of weird. 
Because they go against my vision for Pokemon Let's Go, that Madame Celadon doesn't work. You just get a completely randomized Alolan Pokemon, unfortunately. So that makes things kind of awkward. And then Raticate just comes in. So Adamant Raticate on the Alolan. That way you can get the Sucker Punch Swords Dance combo. Regular Raticate, I recommend a defensive nature. I don't think it really matters, or special defensive nature, I don't think it really matters which one it is, because you have counter. So you want to take more physical damage to counter one-shot an opponent, and then if you have the outspeed potential, you can either do a Super Fang to take away half their health, or you can Thunder Wave them. Thunder Wave Super Fang also effectively removes a sweeper threat from the opponent, so that's something that you can consider right there. Maybe even a speedy nature, you know, you can run the jolly nature as well, that way you kind of keep eradicates a weird niche speed tier and then you can maybe you know counter out speed set up do all the weird things Firo Firo is one of the worst Pokemon in let's go people said if I think Firo is bad then I need to take a look at Farfetch so maybe Farfetch is the worst but either way Jolly Firo you have speed you just don't have damage and if you want to make uh, Firo work kind of like jank together a move set with the drill peck and then drill run and then Jolly and then try to do things with it Arbuck surprisingly good Adamant Nature Arbuck gives you just good damage. Earthquake hurts, Stab hurts, Sucker Punch hurts. You have a lot of follow-ups. You know, you have, like, a lot of combos that just kind of take Pokemon down. And even though you don't have a lot of defenses, the overall power level in the game is reduced, so Arbuck is pretty successful. A lot of these Pokemon I've done guides on. Kind of went, like, pseudo-Pokedex order for a while. Started to understand the game a bit. Raichu. So, Lil and Raichu is pretty much the only Pokemon you want to run. Uh, Timid Nature because you're getting more damage than regular Raichu. You're getting more coverage with the Psychic as well. You do gain some weaknesses, which makes it weird. But I mean, like, Calm Mind, Timid Raichu, pretty solid overall. Uh, Sand Slash. So Sand Slash is a pretty awkward Pokemon that I don't really know what to do with. Alolan Sand Slash, Adam and Nature, Swords Dance, Ice Shard is pretty brutal. But you don't have that priority on the regular Sand Slash. And it's kind of like, do you want to utilize those defenses with a defensive nature? So, also, here's a nature table. Um, I might make some mistakes, because, like, bold is plus defense minus attack. So, if it's obvious I'm saying a physical attacker and I accidentally call it... Or, yeah, if it's a physical attacker and I call it bold, obviously that was wrong and I meant to say impish. I always, like, trip up on bold and impish on the spot, as well as calm and careful. So, that's kind of it. But when we look at this, like, do we want to run the impish sand slash to get, to get that extra defensiveness in there? Because the 100 base attack... Stab Earthquake is good, but you know, right on Adamant Nature 130 attack is going to be a lot. It's going to be a lot more damage. It's going to be a lot more impactful. So when breaking down the Sand Slash, you can run Adamant. You can maybe try to tank Cheese some boldness in there or Impish, as I just kind of said, and that's going to be how the uh, Sand Slash works, as well as the Alolan Sand Slash. So Nido Queen, Nido King. These Pokemon are crazy. Nido Queen, Nido King, always Adamant. Nido Queen, there's a case for defensive nature in there. So you can run the Impish Nido Queen to tank in some more hits, or you just run Adamant, and you're just like a bulkier, so insignificantly less damaged Nido King. I think Nido Queen is the better Pokemon to use. But then there's cases where Nido King actually has two hit KOs. Nido Queen doesn't. Coverage, super effective hits. Nido Queen has Super Fang, so Super Fang isn't going to be affected by a bold nature, which means you're just getting free tankiness, or Impish nature, so you're getting free tankiness. There we go. Clefable. Um, I don't really see too much going on with Clefable, to be honest. Like, it's not as wacky as it is in Gen 7. You can't, like, store, like, you can't cosmic power, store power shenanigans. Uh, it doesn't have the sustain as, as, that it used to. So, I think you just run, uh, Bold Nature, get the most defense out of it, try to just be an, a well-rounded tank and make it work. Ninetales. Uh, Timid Nature across the board, you want to outspeed everything with Alolan Ninetales, you want to keep up with regular Ninetales, just kind of plays into Pokemon's strengths. Wigglytuff. So, Wigglytuff's a weird Pokemon. Um, I feel that it works either with a defensive nature, so you can go with the bold nature, or you can also go with the calm nature, I believe. So, calm up here with the attack. So, yeah, bold nature, calm nature on the Wigglytuff. I don't even know if it uses physical or special attacks. So I haven't, like, had a super deep look into it. And if it's just kind of like some kind of complete support Pokemon, then doesn't matter if you're impish, careful, bold, calm, anything like that. I just want to, like, get the most defenses in so we can utilize the very high hit points this Pokemon has, and that's pretty much going to be it when it comes to Wigglytuff. Golbat, impish nature, again, supportive, defensive, probably getting a little bit of benefit right there. It can be pretty nice. Vileplume, modest nature, Parasect, did a guide on Parasect, I use Parasect, that impish is strong. You can also go, like, adamant, growth, leech life, some stuff. Uh, people also talk about the Brave Nature. So Brave Nature opens up the opportunity to get the strongest Mega Drain. I, I don't know about cutting its speed down. 
Because then if like you're also like speed tying against other Parasect and stuff, you don't always want to be the slowest. That's the thing. Parasect is good. Spore, Leech Seed, it's just kind of strong. And then you have pretty pretty good damage behind it on the on that Leech Life. Venomoth. Venomoth speed tiers, we did the guide. Uh, you kind of just want Timid Nature, because as you Quiver Dance, you kind of get into these weird speed ties that you want to make sure you have, so Timid Nature is going to be the best way of securing that. Doug Trio, it's paper, it's frail, it's 120 speed, only Jolly Nature. Uh, same on the regular Doug Trio. Like, Alolan, or Alolan Doug Trio doesn't really do anything. Uh, some people are talking about it as, like, a toxic switch in and having Steel type, and it is a 110 speed, so it does have some usability, but I just feel like having the, the quick Doug Trio beating down everything is kind of the way to go. Persian. So Persian's a weird Pokemon. Um, I don't know if the special attacking Persian is going to find any usage or not. So Timid or Jolly Nature, depending on how you're building that moveset. The 115 speed is really good, but doesn't really have anything to back it up. It has Fake Out. It has Taunt. It has good, like, shutdown and supportive stuff. The Nasty Plot, though. So Nasty Plot is when you're going to make a case for Timid. And then try to get the most damage, but then that also makes it pretty risky because you're unless you can like, like the only way that a low Persian works or a regular Persian works with the nasty plot is if the opponent's already weak. So you nasty plot, you do the 50%, finish them off, and then the next Pokemon comes in, you just outspeed and do a lot of damage to them, and then you go down. So it's kind of like a like a 50, like it takes out half a Pokemon to finish it, and then takes out another half a Pokemon, and that's kind of it. And you can utilize it because of its speed. So Jolly, if you're doing like play rough, weird physicalness, or trying to like capitalize fake out and maybe some other physical hits and stuff. And then if you're nasty plotting, then Timid Nature. Golduck. Um, as we get into like these mid things, like some of these Pokemon are just weird and don't make any sense. Like Golduck gets the Calm Mind, which is a very broken move. Doesn't really have too much on the sustaining side. Has Jawn, Encore, but it has no speed. So it's not like it's going to be able to outspeed and shut down anything permanently. Its highest stat is the 95 on special attack. So it's like modest nature or do you also run defensive nature i was thinking like okay so if you run the bold nature calm mind get like that mixed up tankiness in there and then get like two attacks off like two scalds or hydro pumps that might actually make it pretty decent it has amnesia as well so it's like amnesia if you want to go for like some kind of weird tank one but again it doesn't have like heavy amounts of sustain so Golduck, that also might be a contender for one of the worst pokemon let's go primeape uh, some of these Pokemon, where's my primate? There we go. Uh, some of these Pokemon, the first time I'm seeing it, 95 speed. It's kind of like its own viable speed tier, so I feel like a Jolly Primate might work, because, like, getting Adamant on 105 attack doesn't really change too many things. So Jolly Primate just staying above, you know, floating, staying afloat in the other weird, spe weird speed tiers that we see in Pokemon. Let's go Pikachu and Eevee. That's a thing. Arcanine. I did a guide on Arcanine, and you can either go for a careful nature... Because it can like crunch and stuff and it has like a decent physical move pool you can go for calm nature if you want to like throw out flamethrowers and stuff the reason why i want special defensive nature is as will-o-wisp so you will-o-wisp the opponent and then you have high special defense backing that up or just run adamant high coverage kind of bulky pokemon and then arcanine does really well without the intimidate without being able to split its evs all into hit points and defenses it really suffers so it goes from like being one of the strongest, most used Pokemon in Gen and, uh, Pokemon Sun and Moon, Pokemon Ultra Soldier Moon, down to, it's okay. It's okay. Uh, Polyrath. Polyrath, uh, it's an adamant nature. You just kind of want to get the most you can with it and then do some really weird stuff. I actually got beat up by Polyrath pretty hard, so that's all right. Alkazam, no bra brainer, timid. Machamp, adamant nature, or some kind of defensive nature as well. And Machamp has a lot of natural bulk, so since it gets bulk up, Go for a careful nature. Careful Machamp with bulk up, and then try to, like, super effective coverage and pray that it does something. But that's not going to be enough to guarantee a KO, you know? Machamp, it's going to be in a really weird spot. Because, like, if you have elemental punches, that's low base power, non-stab, even stab, like Brick Break or something. Low base power, super effective hit. Not going to be enough to take out Kangaskhan or Snorlax, even at plus one, I believe. So, but, I mean, it is a threat. If it comes in and starts bulking up against a physical Pokemon, and it's not taking a lot of damage, that's pretty good. If it was able to survive a hit from a special attacker because of that careful nature, that's pretty good. Or it just turned into a complete defense tank. So you run the Impish nature, complete defense tank, and then hope it gets a good run. Maybe Counter Sweeper, so you just take out all their special attackers, you sit in the Machamp, and hopefully it picks up one or two Pokemon like that. Victory Bell. Victory Bell is strong. It has the Power Whip on a really good attack stat, and it, it's wrecked me before. So I think Brave Nature, because its speed doesn't really matter too much. And then that also leaves Giga Drain options open, or you just run Adamant Nature, Leech Life, uh, Power Whip, stuff like that. So yeah, I was looking at the Victory Bell. 
its stats. So you can cut on the speed. I don't think it really matters too much. Has good mixed opportunities, so losing that. Familias, Swords Dance, Sucker Punch, Leaf Life, Power Whip. Terrifying. Um, if you don't want to go for Swords Dance setup, that's a thing. Mega Drain kind of keeps open. You have Poison Jab as well as a Sludge Bomb. Sludge Bomb's slightly more base power, so... You know, you can do a lot of things. You also have Sleep Powder. So, I mean, you Sleep Powder, Swords Dance, Leech Life, Power Whip. That's also really strong. And that would just be a call for Adamant Nature because there's no special attacks in there. But, I mean, for the most part, you're not going to be using Mega Drain. Just in case. Just in case you want to have, like, that option in there to heal off of a super effective hit. Or you just one-shot them anyways with Power Whip. 85, pa 85 accuracy, though. Could miss. Could screw you over. Victory Bell's just well-rounded. Like... Average defenses, slightly average, uh, slightly above average on the hit points, then good attack, and it only cuts out on the speed, which, if it's not a 110 or higher, it doesn't really matter anyways. Tentacruel's weird. I think there's a case for Timid Tentacruel as a special defense tank, just outspeeding everything. It also gets barrier, so maybe special defensive nature onto that defense. And as for the attacks, you know, it can also scald, so like scald, burn behind barrier, just never taking any damage. Uh, unfortunately, no Aqua Ring, no Leftovers. So that's where, like, the abilities items kind of kill off its sustain. But it still has, like, bulk and speed. So, Timid Nature, or you can also run the Calm Nature. Something like that on Tentacruel. Golem, Adamant, you pretty much Stealth Rocks, Explosion. And if you have enough left in the tank to survive, maybe threat an Earthquake at some, at some point. Rapidash, Jolly Nature, Outspeed, Fast Fire, works out. Slowbro. I'm either thinking that you want to go, like, full, bold Slowbro, just mega Slowbro, unkillable defense, all in right there, or modest, because it has a good amount of special attack. But like I said earlier with the um, Venusaur example, I think it's just better to have a defensive Slowbro and then use it as, like, a dedicated defensive tank that has good coverage with the Psychic and the Water and its Stab, and it has naturally high special defense. So boosting at naturally high special defense probably isn't really going to do too much for you. Uh, Magneton doesn't have a lot of hit points, so the defenses are kind of waste. Flash Cannon, Modest, is I... Does he even get Flash Cannon Pokemon Let's Go? I think I remember using it, but I don't remember if Flash Cannon is actually a viable move. Oh, yeah, it is. Cool. Yeah, not a lot of po people get that, probably. So, Tri-Attack, Thunderbolt, Flash Cannon, maybe a Thunder. I don't know. So, that's why you want the Modest Nature. Just kind of keep the most damage. Use your typing for all of its resistances, and just hope you don't run to super effective hits. The four times ground sucks, because everything has Earthquake. Fire and Fighting, not the most common, but if you can use it to soak up all of these hits, Magneton can work out, and at least you're doing a lot more damage, you're forcing switches. Magne Magneton can be a good double switch Pokemon. You bring it in, the opponent knows it's bulky, and then you free switch out into a prediction on something that wants to kill Magneton. Farfetch'd, Adamant, I don't know. It doesn't really have much else going for it, so yeah, just Adamant and hope you get the most damage out of it. Dodrio, Dodrio received buffs in the 7th generation, so Jolly Nature is going to be pretty nice on Dodrio. It's fast does damage. Dugong. Um, I feel like Dugong is going to be best. Uh, <laughs> like, I, I was trying to think about that. I think I'm trying to look at my, what I, where I have it listed as in my little handy dandy notebook. Cause I can't remember. Ah, I have it listed as impish for just general physical attacks. And then you just like impish horn drill and then camp the Dugong like that. It also has ice shard and aqua jet. So maybe an Adamant Dugong. It's not a lot of damage, but if you're like some priority cheese Pokemon, you know, like Aqua Jet, Protect, and then like you finish off low Pokemon or something, there might be some kind of niche for that. Muck, Adamant Nature, Alolan Muck, Adamant Nature. Uh, the tankiness behind a Minimize works, but then Muck doesn't have a lot of sustain. And if it's resting, then that means it has three turns where you could just like get bullied through that Minimize or something. That's like, it rests. Like, all right, switch into my Stab Earthquake Pokemon and just try to hit the Muck. And then it's also vulnerable to a Fissure or something. So, I mean, getting the most damage down while you can, probably going to be the best way of running Muck. Cloyster. Um, I haven't done the speed checks on it, but I feel like since there's no EVs in the game and you're using Shell Smash, Modest Nature for the most damage and then doubling that damage for the Modest is probably a better way to go. So you just go double your speed, Modest Nature. That should outspeed 150 base speed Pokemon. You can do damage calculations. If it doesn't, then you went Timid. We'll see when the guide comes out. Again, I just went through like 70 Pokemon, so I wasn't able to like check every little thing. I got tired by this point in the list. Uh, modest Nature, otherwise. Also, it's what you're worried about. If you're not worried about the Mega Alakazam and you outspeed everything else, then camp the Modest, do as much damage as possible. Cloyster needs it, because if the thing in front of it doesn't die, then that means it dies with its now reduced defenses and special defense. Gengar, Timid Nature, you gotta, you gotta do the most with that 110 speed. Onyx, uh, 
I think with the Onyx, you're just going to go for the bold nature, try to be as defensive as possible. Has very low hit points, so really Rhydon just slaps this thing out of the water when it comes to overall tankiness. Hypno, um, modest, but also you can play on its stats, because Hypno's stats are also uh, pretty... Pretty, like, M Hypno and Mr. Mime are weird, because they have massive amounts of special defense. So you can technically make these Pokemon, like, weird special defense, sustainy-ish kind of Pokemon. Like, I'm against Hypnosis Calm Mind, or not Hypnosis Calm Mind, Hypnosis um, Dream Eater. But, I mean, if you, like, you do that against special attacking, or a special attacking Pokemon, and you have a special defense, so you go Calm, Hypnosis, Dream Eater, and you get two Dream Eaters, and you get, like, half your health back, that's something. Also, you have, like, all the weird stuff. You can set up Light Screen, Reflect... You have Sleeping Potential. You have Calm Mind. So, I mean, you just kind of sit there, barrier for your defenses. Uh, again, if they had more, like, Sustain inside of it or Outsped, like, you know, you could Calm Mind, Barrier, and then Rest, and then just not have to worry about anything. You can run it like that Mega Alakazam. Mega Alakazam is a lot more frail, but if you don't have to worry, like, if you either set up on slower Pokemon, or if you come in on, like, a Pokemon that's not threatening you with a lot of damage, then maybe go for the Defensive Nature. You know, that's when you go and bring in the Bold Nature. Bold Nature... Barrier, Calm Mind, Calm Mind, Barrier, Rest, and then you just stay alive forever. It does make it to where you are very vulnerable because you only have one attack left. And then that can get read by a Pokemon. But there's not a lot of Dark Types in the game. So for the most part, you can get away with the last move. Psychic, something like that. So it depends on how you run the Hypno, and that's going to change the nature that you want. Electrode, Timid, Kingler, Adamant, Executor. Uh, I just think Modest Executor is going to be the best way to go. You put them to sleep with Sleep Powder and then you just hit them with a lot of different things. Marowak. Marowak is going to be a lot like Sand Slash for me. I think going with the Impish nature to kind of get that extra defensive cheese is going to be good. So Impish, Stealth Rocks, Earthquake, Prey for the Marowak. Alolan Marowak is just garbage. Doesn't have... It doesn't have its signature move for the Shadow Bone. Doesn't really bring much into it. You don't get to have Marowak's items. I think Marowak... It, if you if you compensate and let's go, like say you buff Marowak to like 120 attack, just for let's go, that makes things weird because then it gets immediately reverted in Gen 8. So I mean, it just kind of fell apart. It never really had that great of an ability anyway. So I mean, it lost its item. It lost a lot of what it can do. Him only him on Chan. Both these guys could be adamant nature. You want to get the most uh, damage out of it. Weezing. I feel Weezing with a impish nature is going or impish or bold I, I don't know if it wants to do special attacks or not so you just make it really defensive or you can also go for a calm nature will-o-wisp and then just kind of tank things out while you're chipping them away uh will-o-wisp on wheezing has always been strong has always been like a staple of it and i think that that's you know it doesn't have the pain split in this game so it loses that sustain potential but i mean it can also like come in and haze and do some extra things if it needs to right on adamant nature so just like beefy 130 strongest earthquake in the game you want that it has a high amount of hit points it's tanky just capitalize on ride on's advantages and two shot everything on an earthquake but you are slower so it's like you're three at ko pokemon outspeed take damage you earthquake outspeed take damage you earthquake you ko and then you get outsped again and you die so that's that's the life of ride on um some pokemon that are physical though it's like a five hit ko against ride on so that means ride on does thrive in certain situations chancy do not run a defensive nature on Chansey. No EVs makes this thing worthless defensively. If you have a bold nature or an impish nature on the Chansey, all you're doing is you're turning that 130% physical hit into like a 112, you know? You're, you're two shot regardless, you're one shot regardless. Chansey has no, no right doing anything defensive in this game. So you capitalize, special defense. Calm nature or careful because it really doesn't have like charge beam or any kind of uh, special attacking setup. So calm nature... Chansey, get get special defensive tank and then blow like just tank out any of your opponent's special defensive Pokemon. Tangela, I, I like the bold nature on the Tangela. It gives you like it's it's kind of like the opposite of Chansey. You know, it has sustain, so you go Leech Seed, Giga Drain behind the bold nature, and then physical Pokemon just don't touch you. Also, an incredible earthquake switch in Pokemon. Kangaskhan. Some people want Jolly. I think Adamant's the best because two of your bread and butter moves are priority, Fake Out and Sucker Punch. And then speed tying with a 100 speed Pokemon doesn't really mean as much. So I'd rather just get the most damage down with the Kangaskhan. Make sure that uh, Fake Out, Sucker Punch, Earthquake combo guarantees a KO on everything. Seedra. Seedra is actually another contender for one of the worst Pokemon. Modest Nature. Maybe. Uh, Seeking. So Seeking... I feel like running like the Dugong in that you can go with an Adamant Nature and try to do some things. Like as the Megahorn. So big Megahorn is something, actually, yeah, it still probably has in Let's Go. We don't have the Let's Go move set in Bulbapedia. So, I mean, you can just kind of use your coverage on Adamant, or you go for a defensive nature, and then you try to horn drill everything to death. Do that. 
You know, just horn drill seeking. That would that if you get like two back to back horn drills and win a game off that, I'll have the deepest respect for you because the opponent would never see that coming. Starmie, Timid Nature. What else to say? It's coverage, it's fast, it's a special sweeper. Mr. Mime, uh, like the Hypno, you can either go modest to capitalize damage, or you just go with a special defensive nature, so calm nature. And then try to cheese something out. Scyther's gonna be jolly. Jinx is gonna be modest. Maybe timid if that like kind of like the primate. It's in that 95 speed tier. So if you want to hold on to that 95, go timid. If you just want to worry about damage, go modest. Jinx has a 115 special attack, so adding a little bit to that could maybe offset some two and three hit KOs in a weird way. Electabuzz, Jolly, it's actually a one 105 speed. So you want that. You want a 105 physical electric or just 105 electric in any regard magmar i think modest is the best doesn't have a lot of defenses that are worth it doesn't have a lot of speed that's worth it pincer pretty much only mega pincer so jolly nature tauros jolly nature gyarados adamant nature uh a lot of those pokemon are just straightforward so i kind of breeze through them because this video is already taking forever lapras i feel like lapras is again like one of those you can run it for modest for a lot of damage like modest with stab ice and water that's pretty good or you go for a, a uh, defensive nature. So, bold nature Lapras. Maybe have that cheese one-hit KO behind an already strong Scald and Ice Beam. Since it's kind of like Venusaur as well. So, it's like Venusaur with the potential to horn drill you. So, that's the Lapras. Uh, Vaporeon. I'm thinking bold nature. Just make it as tanky as possible. Jolteon. Timid nature. Gotta be fast. Gotta do that damage. Flareon. Modest nature. Not modest. Uh, adamant nature. Just kind of hit with that physical. Maybe modest as well. Could work. Porygon. Porygon doesn't do a lot. It has Recover. It's a normal type Pokemon with Recover, so it's not eating a lot of super effective hits. So, Bold Nature, Porygon, hope that Tri-Attack does a lot, and then just play status games next to that Recover. Porygon can be scary. I think Porygon can be scary. Amistar is a lot slower than the Cloister, so you need to have a Timid Nature if you want to outspeed everything after a Shell Smash. Kabutops, Adamant, Priority, good damage. Aerodactyl, Jolly, just be the fastest Pokemon in the game with Stealth Rocks to where nothing can contest you. Snorlax, I'm thinking Adamant Nature is just going to be the best. Use your natural bulk and just hit everything with great coverage. Like, Snorlax is good coverage. You got Earthquake, you got Crunch behind there, you got a few other things you can do. Adamant Nature, get the most out of it. Articuno, Moltres, Zapdos. I just did my guide, so if you want to check out how to, if you want to check out the best legendary bird guide, I did a video about it, talk about Bold Articuno, Timid Zapdos, but you can also run Bold Zapdos, Calm Zapdos. There's a lot of things you can do with the Zapdos. Uh, Modest Zapdos, if you want to capitalize on the most damage. Uh, and then Modest Moltres, Flamethrower, Air Slash, Roost, works out really well. But I mean, Timid is also where you find Zapdos lock, because that 100. Dragonite's Adamant, Mewtwo is Timid, Mew. I'm not talking about Mythical Pokemon, Meltan, Melmetal, all that stuff. Yeah. So there we go, guys. That's it. I'm tired. Hope you enjoyed the video. We just did a lot of stuff, and I was actually able to get it in under time, I think. I don't know.